Welcome to Soundbridge Music's Featured Artist Interview. In this series, we get to know front-range artists who not only shape the local music scene, but who joined with Soundbridge Music in its mission to use the power of music to improve the lives of individuals and bring communities together. We're so excited to be here today with Mad Dog Friedman. Mad Dog writes from the moment and sings songs from his heart. Although most known as an amazing blues harmonica player, he's a multi-instrumentalist, composer, and songwriter. He's been kind enough to take some time out of his day to talk with us about his music, his inspiration, and the exciting things he's got coming up. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for doing this and for being the featured artist for oh, June. Thank you so much for having this this um, series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm really excited to talk uh, to you. Some, I'm really honored to be part of it because we had some really great people on, yeah. on the show. Yeah, it's been a really uh, positive thing, I think, to allow artists a chance to talk about the things that they've got going. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people know you from the Mad Dog Blues experience, but that's, that's really only a, a fraction of of what you've done and some of the projects you've been involved with and some of the names that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm really hoping that we can talk about some of this stuff today. It's it's actually my most recent project. Yeah. Except for Astro Project, maybe. And it's also, um, it's also almost my, my most exciting. It's the first project I've ever been involved in where I made a band, put together a band, around a particular sound I was after mm. that was in my head. And it's a little different than anything else I've done or anything else I've heard. So it's really, really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so you don't not only play the harmonica, but you also play the Native American flute. Native American flute, yes. And the theremin. And the theremin, mm -hmm. is that the way it's pronounced? Yeah, I don't, I sold my theremin. I don't play theremin anymore. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm totally sold on the theremin. So that's really good. So tell me a little bit about, I mean, those are like kind of, I won't say unusual, but a little bit atypical instruments. What is What inspired you to become involved with those kinds of instruments? What experiences throughout your life have kind of honed you into the specialist that you are? Well, it's not it's so dramatic. Uh, <laughs> it's all the instruments that I play are ones that, don't require disciplined practice in order to start making them sound musically. And consequently, I'm able to play them and just keep playing them. And, and, and uh, um, over years, I get better. But um, it's, I don't believe in practice as much as I believe in playing. Mm -hmm. I believe that, I mean, I will practice a, a a part or a song or a part in a song that I want to sound or someone wants me to play it a certain way. But, um, or a hook or, you know, a signature riff or those kind of things. But when I play my music, I play from my heart. I play, um, I play by feel. A lot of people say I play by, that they call it playing by ear, but no, it's really playing by feel. Mm -hmm. And, um, these are all instruments that are super well suited for doing that. Well, uh, you collaborate with all kinds of folks, though. Yeah. Like locally, and you have, like, we're just looking at your website and all the different projects that you've been involved, win, involved with. It's just really, what, what inspires you to collaborate so much? I feel like everyone collaborates to some extent, but I, I feel like that's kind of a hallmark of what you do. Well, I feel like um, my best stuff is collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to song school, f I don't know, somewhere about eight years, I guess. Wow. And one thing I, I see over and over again with singer-songwriters, which I consider myself a singer-songwriter, even though I don't play guitar, um, is what's called the, what I call the songwriter's curse. That all your songs sound alike, at least to some degree. And there's a couple ways to get out of that. One way is to constantly stretch yourself. What they always say at song school is put your guitar down when you write your song so you're not limited by the patterns that you're used to. But um, my best way of, of, of getting over that curse and to expand and to get new territory and to, to learn and, and to produce my best work is collaboration. Mm -hmm. so. so what have you got going on right now? Oh, the, it's... It's harvest time. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen your schedule. It's jam packed. Yeah, I have. 
I have uh, lots of different people I'm playing with and lots of exciting opportunities coming up with them that uh, it's just blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure how I got here. I know how I, know how I got here with the band. Um, that was very deliberate and, and very gradual. We started putting the band together last year. So last year um, at the Colorado Blues Society, IBC, um, I competed with an old friend of mine, Dirk Dixon, who's a uh, stand-up bass player. And really the story is, I got back from Memphis last uh, two winters ago, and it was a terrible trip back. I got sick as a dog. I didn't get any sleep. It took me like two days to get back with all the weather and stuff. So I was at home listening to one of the CDs I had from Memphis, and sick as could be, and listening to this one CD of this guy that was a harmonic player, guitar player, blind guy from Croatia, playing with a stand-up bass player from New York. And um, sometimes he wasn't playing guitar. It was just harmonica and stand-up bass. And something about that sound just grabbed me and said, that's what I want to do. And so I put this together for the IBC, and then um, Dirk wasn't interested in, in continuing as a band, but that got me started it saying, okay, I want this sound, this acoustic, I want this sound where I'm playing acoustic harmonica and there's a stand-up bass and uh, mandolin. So I called up my friend, uh, Jeff Becker, who's an amazing mandolin player that I've known for years and used to play with um, in the past. And he was totally into it and, you know, you can handle the blues. And, and so that goes back to that time period of music I really liked, the country blues. There, mm -hmm. there was you know, uh, a couple really wonderful uh, mandolin players in the in the country blues. And so it's like, it's, it's this country blues sound, but then we wanted to fuse it with what's happening here in Colorado, which is the Colorado sound. And it may not be like the, the latest thing happening, but historically, around the world, Colorado is known for the Colorado sound, which is jam grass. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to combine it with jam grass and uh, and fuse it because that's the way it was originally. Yeah. So you have a CD out. You have a relatively recently, right? Uh, the my most recent CD is the band CD, which is called Happy Dance, mm -hmm. which is kind of way this band feels to me. It's my happy dance, uh -huh. and um, uh, the players in in Mad Dog Blues are uh, Sean Benite and uh, we uh, have Clark Chancellor on bass and uh, Jeff Becker on guitar. And uh, we uh, sometimes use Steve Dorsum or Stevie D on uh, guitar and rhythm vocals and also Mark Kazarowski. Uh, Mark's gonna be stepping up more and more and I think Steve's gonna be stepping out more and more, but uh, we've, we've used both those players over the last, last few years, sort of the rhythm, rhythm section. Mm -hmm. We don't have drums and we only have stand-up bass. But the thing that's so wonderful for, about it for me is that I can play all my rhythm harmonica. Mm -hmm. Every other band I've ever played in other than um, acoustic duos, uh, uh, you know, really, you know, Delta Blues kind, kind of duos, um, there really isn't a lot of rhythm I can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually the more instruments you add, the less you play. So once you get more than one other instrument, then I'm usually not playing rhythm much. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a five-piece band, and we have no drums, and I just enjoy so much playing rhythm, along with the mandolin and the guitar and the stand-up bass. And I don't feel like we need any drums. In fact, mm -hmm. I find it freeing and, and liberating and allow us to take the music places that we wouldn't be able to go, maybe, if mm -hmm. there was a drummer that was just trying to keep us in that box. Right. Well, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about a project that um, you really created, um, Harmonicas for Health. Harmonicas for Health. Yes. So I know this is something very near and dear to you, so just, I, are, I know about it already, but just for the people that have never heard about it, well, just talk a little bit. Harmonicas for Health, um, the next offering will be in the fall, and it will be through Thornton, cultural arts. So look for that in the Thornton Cultural Arts catalog. Um, and um, it's, what I do is, it's a, it's a, a wellness class 
using harmonica uh, for seniors. And uh, one of the biggest issues as you get older is you tend to not get as much oxygen in your blood. And that makes you tired and that makes you not do as much and slow down. And so to reverse that and get that back, um, harmonica is a great, great way to do that. And there's a lot of uh, studies that are starting to come out now and a lot of um, anecdotal information about how much playing harmonica just 20 minutes a day uh, will help your breathing and exercise those muscles. So what I do is I go in there with, um, we don't practice, we play, we have fun, and I try to develop a 20 minute a day wellness routine of playing harmonica. Um, and you know, we learn how to play the basics of harmonica, we do some tabs, and I give them some, some CDs I make up for backing tapes to play along with, and we jam, and they learn, um, Harmonica is one of the easiest instruments in the world to play, even though it's one of the hardest to master. Mm -hmm. So you can get started and start having fun with it right away mm -hmm. once you get over a couple couple hurdles. And so and if you, so people are interested, they can sign up for this class. They can sign up for this Absolutely. class. Absolutely. And this yes. is the next one's in Thornton, right? Next one's in okay. Thornton. Yeah. Excellent. And um, it's, I just I love doing it. The, the people are, <laughs> are so appreciative and they, they enjoy it so much. And um, I kind of motivated from it because I lost a cousin that, uh, from, uh, uh, from a lung condition. And so she was a big Bob Dylan fan and loved harmonica and uh, I wish I would have known about it then. Mm -hmm. But um, um, it's, it's, a, it's something that I think can really, really help people. Um, if they're at all music inclined, it doesn't matter. If they have any musical theory, it doesn't matter. They're going to be playing and having fun 20 minutes a day on harmonica, and that will help them breathe mm -hmm. better. And I think like what you're doing just typifies like what Soundbridge is all about, and that's why we're so grateful that you're a part of this organization. And thank you for doing what you do. Well, thank you all for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we are so honored to not only have Soundbridge, but the Soundbridge artists. Mm. Uh, it's Absolutely. an incredible group of people in, 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 the, in the Boulder County area now that, that uh, uh, play music and are interested in, in using, using music uh, to make the world a better place. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch Mad Dog Live sometime this summer. Visit maddogharp.com for a full listing of his summer concerts. Be sure to check back next month for our next featured artist. And if you're interested in learning more about Soundbridge Music and becoming a part of Music for Change, check us out at soundbridgemusic.org.